Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. And listen, there are so many things going on simultaneously in our country, and I'm excited about what God is doing. Let me mention this. Uh, among the things that's going on is early voting. If you haven't voted already, hey, now don't do it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it during church time, but make sure you get out there and cast your vote. Pamela and I, we voted uh, early. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, and uh, we cast our vote and waited in line and found a good place. It didn't take no more than about 45 minutes. And I want to say to you, no matter how long it takes, uh, vote. Participate in the process. If you don't participate, you don't have a right to complain. Participate. And if you look like me, many people had to march. Many people died. Many people had to fight for you to get that right. So make sure you participate in the process. And also uh, be an informed voter. Find out what's going on. Uh, go to various news sources. Find out where the politicians stand on the issues and and then vote your conscience and vote your conviction and you will have done your civic duty. I will add this identity politics and voting just straight party only. That's probably uh, that's still a vote, but it's the most mindless uh, uh, method of voting. You want to make sure you're up on what's going on. And if you do that, God will bless you real good. Brother Gary, I speak of him often, and I said to him the, uh, the other day that uh, I want to one day show him on the camera because I want you all to know that I'm not talking to a ghost. I'm not talking uh, to myself. Uh, there is a guy in here. He, he's, he produces this, uh, this uh, uh, show. He's a tremendous man of God, a very, very dear friend. I enjoy working with him. I think he's a brilliant person. And and Brother Gary was out of town. So, listen, I won't put him on the spot today. Not unless, Brother Gary, you ready to get on the spot. I won't put him on today. Maybe next time uh, he'll come prepared to step out and let you guys see who I call him the leech. Gary Leach is. He's a tremendous man, and I, I, I'm thankful to God for him. But while he was out of town, he came back home and found this on his door. This was on his door. And while out of town, he got a visitor from Planned Parenthood. This is the, now I, I must admit, it, it was a door mailer. Uh, is that what they call it? Door, door hanger. It's, 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 it's pretty. I love the color. Pink and blue. And it says this, look how beautiful, look how beautiful this hellish message is. Abortion is on the ballot. Election day is Tuesday, November the 5th, 2024. Planned Parenthood. Yes, abortion is on the ballot. And I pray to God that every born again believer will do everything they can to save babies. When I think of Tufet, when I think of the Valley of uh, Hinnom, and when I think of Gehenna, uh, it reminds me of abortion. Tufet and the Valley of, of, of Hinnom in the Old Testament. Jeremiah spoke of these were the places where they would go and offer children to the wicked god Molech. And the, it was their form of abortion. And these children were burnt alive, hoping to get favorable circumstances. Over 98% of all abortions in America are performed because the child is simply not wanted. The abortion is a form of birth control. And so human beings are being literally, literally exterminated. And I'll be honest with you. Hey, look, look, we've out, we've outsmarted ourselves. Uh, President Bill Clinton said it last week while in, uh, in uh, uh, Georgia talking to some people. He said we need to bring in migrants because Americans aren't having enough 
children. Yes, we're not reproducing at replacement levels. And in the black community, our reproduction is way down, way down. Each woman of, uh, of a childbearing age would have to have two children, at least two, uh, to uh, possibly uh, help us and turn around the situation, and 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 that's whether she's married or not. She need would she would need to have at least two children, and that's not going to happen. We're giving birth at the rate now of maybe one point five, maybe one point seven on a good year, when it needs to be two point. Uh, 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 one. And so we're in trouble, my friends. We've outsmarted ourselves. And one of the great things that have hurt us is killing, uh, the unborn. I want to say to all my friends out there who are social justice warriors, warriors, write me, call me, text me, reach out to me and answer this question. Does social justice, uh, uh apply to the unborn? And if it does, please Please join me in helping to save these precious babies, change the minds of these frightful women who are in many cases in a difficult situation, afraid, don't, they don't know what to do. The money is not right. All kinds of things are going on. That's not true in every case, but many of them are shaking in their shoes. But I want to say to you, there's hope. There's people uh, out there who can help you, but let's encourage them to do the right thing. We don't want to be like China. China has a China's one child popular uh, uh, policy has China where you got at least you have at least a million me more men in China than you do women. Who'd want to live there? A million more men than women. Now, that's going to lead to all kinds of problems. But you know what happened? The Chinese got smarter than God, and they've outsmarted themselves. We've gotten smarter than God, and we decided that a woman has the right to do what she wants to do with her own body. Brother Gary, I know I'm not the sharpest knife in the draw, but I didn't know that women were pregnant with their own bodies. I thought women were pregnant with babies. I thought what was in the woman was a individual, a human being, a human being. Praise the Lord that God, according to the Bible, Psalm 139, have written a script for. Praise God. If you are drunk and you hit a woman and she's pregnant and uh, uh, and you, you are charged, you're not charged with hitting one person. You are charged with hitting two. Vehicular homicide or whatever, whatever the charge would be. You are charged with killing two people. Oh, yes, you're right. Uh, Planned Parenthood, it's on the, on the, uh, on the, on the, on the ballot and it's got voter registration, early voting information, request of absentee ballots, election day. All you gotta do is scan it. I'm not gonna show it where you can scan it because I'm not gonna help them that way. So look, it's on. For the believer, let's do all we can to save babies. Now, I'm excited about this weekend, and, and this is a good, interesting uh, segue into uh, this weekend because this weekend is Women's Weekend at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Women's Weekend uh, 2024, uh, praise God, October the 24th through the 27th, and it's going to be something starting tonight. Tonight, tonight, you listen, they've asked yours truly, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr., to be the speaker for Women's weekend. Uh, the theme is transformation. Taken from Romans 12 and verse 2. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. Transformation. And listen, the director of our mi women's ministry here at the Upper Room is the lovely, wonderful, talented, beautiful, <clears throat> if I must say so myself, my wife Pamela. And uh, uh, she's excited. I'm excited excited about what's going to take place uh, during Women's Weekend. We have some tremendous guests who's going to be with us. The prophetess Lata 
Laura Tillman is going to be our guest speaker on Friday night. And Friday night is open to everyone. It's not just women's night, but th this woman of God is going to be ministering to us all. And I want to invite you, 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 and especially you to come out. All roads lead to the upper room church of God in Christ. Look, you've already had a fry Snickers. Listen, you've already eaten corn on the cob. You've already eaten a, a sausage dog. You need to come on to the house of God. Don't worry about the fire. Come on to the word of God where you can get an anointing on you and every day will be bright and fair. Hallelujah. Praise God. And on this weekend, we have a tremendous speaker, national evangelist. Renee Winston is going to be here ministering the word of the Lord in the 8 a.m. and the 11 a.m. service. So it's going to be, it's going to be something. And I got to tell you about this. I got to bring this up. Look at this, Gary. I want to show it to him. To him. Uh, you, we, 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 I'm sure you, you put the Women's Weekend information on the stage, uh, on the screen there. Well, let's look at uh, uh, the Sisters Day Out. Sisters Day Out. Uh, uh, we're going to have in the Sisters Day Out a, a thing called Sisters Talk Live. Now, the Sisters Talk Live will include evangelist Crystal Amanchuku, Mother Beverly DeJanay, First Lady Pamela Wooden, Prophetess Latara Tillman, Mother Harazine Keys, Supervisor Harazine Keys, as, as Supervisor also Mother Beverly DeJanay, and a national evangelist, Renee Winston. These six powerful women, and uh, guess who is going to be in the midst of them, uh, taking questions and talking about things? You guessed it. No, it's not Brother Gary. It's going to be me. Praise the Lord. Uh, they've asked me to be a part of this. It's going to be a beautiful day, a spiritual day. Uh, the Sisters Day Out presenters will be uh, prophetess uh, Sophia McBride. Oh, she's a powerful woman of God, highly anointed. And uh, First Lady Desiree Lyon. What a wonderful woman of God she is. And First Lady Nadine Stone. Dr. Nadine Stone. What a tremendous woman of God. God, she is. It's going to be a spiritual day. Uh, they're giving. That they're going to have wonderful giveaways. Over twenty vendors, lunch, fellowship giveaways. I mean, they are having a sisters' day out, and I'm excited about being with them because let me tell you something. This is not a change in operation. This is not a change in our behavior. Uh, Brother Wooden is with. The women, thank God for saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled women who are playing a major role in the move of God in these last days. We need, my friends, all hands on deck. We need every person, whether it's a male or female. If you believe that the Bible is right, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior and the soon coming King, if you believe that Holy Holiness is right. Holiness, yes. If you believe that holiness is right and godliness is right. If you believe that the God of the Bible got it right. Ladies, I'm talking to you. Men, I'm talking to you. But women out there in particular, if you believe, if you trust God, if you trust the Bible with your origin, if you believe that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, if you trust the Bible with the uh, God's first institution, the institution of marriage, where he brought Eve to Adam, and uh, where the Bible says, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. If you trust God with the definition of family, Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel, as the Bible described, the children came as a result of this man and woman of God being married to each other. If you trust, hallelujah, the Bible and trust the scriptures and believe in the Judeo-Christian concept, if you believe that uh, God made uh, two sexes, 
male and female. If you trust the scriptures with these things, and, and, and I'll be honest with you, my friends, if you don't trust the scriptures with this thing, how can you trust the, trust the scriptures with your soul? How can you trust them with uh, the, the, what, the, what it says about going to heaven? How can you trust anything God says if you distrust God on these matters? Well, listen, women, listen, men, if you trust God on these things that I've just said to you, then it is necessary as never before that you allow your voice to be heard, that you, you talk about it where people gather, that you talk to your, your friends and family. It's called, you know, being a witness, that you witness for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Witness in the way you live. Witness in the way you walk. Witness in the way you talk. Witness in the way you vote. Everything about you is to be a witness for Jesus Christ. My God, Gary, I feel that song that we used to sing. Witness for my Lord. Witness Witness for my Lord. My soul is a witness. Do I have any witnesses out there? We're going to be a witness in these last days for our Lord because he's looking for people who will be used of him and who are willing to speak up. The Bible teaches that the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Will you, my friends, be one of God's laborers? The Bible says this, and I'm going to close with this because I'm preaching tonight and God has given me a message that is going to bless you real good. I want every man, every woman, Woman, everyone under the sound of my voice who can get here to be here in the service live and my friends who are streaming I'm telling you we're bringing the word of the Lord to you in the name of Jesus and thank you for tuning in thank you for for, for uh, joining in with us you mean the world to us but I want to read this passage to you as we uh, go off uh, bring this to a conclusion it's Titus chapter number 3 and verse 8 I just think that everybody needs to just look at this thing. He says, this is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly. Paul said to Titus, teach this constantly. And Titus was, uh, he left Titus in Crete. He left Titus, if, the best way I could describe Titus to get you to kind of see it, he left Titus in the red light district. He left Titus in the rough side of town. Oh, on the island of Crete, the Cretans were called slow bellies. The Cretans were called liars. The Cretans were lazy. The Cretans wanted things that they weren't willing to work for. Oh, the Cretans, I'm telling you, they were a tough bunch. Paul said to Titus, I've left you in Crete to ordain elders in every city. I've, I've left you there to carry on this work. So he says this, he says, I want you, I want you to affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Why is it good and profitable unto men for those of us who believe in God to maintain good works, to live a good life, to live a life that lines up with our testimony? Why? Why is it necessary? Why is it profitable unto men? I'll tell you why. Because other men will see it and they will get saved. Nothing is as powerful, nothing is as powerful as uh, uh, the, the story of Jesus being told, well told in a vessel from a vessel where the story of Jesus is well lived. So I want you to meet me tonight here at the upper room church of God in Christ for Bible study. Women's Weekend. Good Bible preaching. <laughs> it's all going down. It's all going to happen today. And I'm excited about it. Now go on and get ready, get ready, get ready. And meet me here uh, at the church. We're going to have a time in the Lord. Gary, let's tune out. Let's go off because, man, I'm fired up. I'll see you tonight. <laughs>